Hello and welcome to the video. This is a short video just showing how I put FPV simply onto something like a fixed wing. In fact, we're going to pop it onto this Texumo. And the reason for the video is that a couple of friends of mine have been asking me around how you do this simply and have struggled with some of the components that they've been choosing. And also I've had a couple of requests from subscribers and Patreons asking for a video to show how to do it as well. Because actually adding FPV onto a model doesn't have to be very complicated. I already have lots of series where we add FPV as a standard part of a smart wing, smart plane or quadcopter build and those are typically being connected to things running Betaflight or iNav or even things like Eagle Tree Vector or Pixhawk. But you don't always have to have a flight controller in the model to be able to fly FPV. In fact, Sometimes it's fun just to put FPV on a plane or wing that you really love or that's cheap as chips like this little Texumo and you can fly it and have a lot of fun and not constantly in the back of your mind having a little tally of how expensive the camera is, the action camera, the flight controller and all the other pieces that you have invested in a model. So in this one, I'm going to install the FPV pieces into this Texumo and talk about how to do it. I'll put links in the description to the stuff I'm using. Uh, there's Everybody has their own particular favorite video transmitters. Everyone has their own particular cameras, but I'll explain why I'm using these ones in particular. And again, I'll pop the links down below if you want to use the same stuff. Before we get into starting snipping wires and soldering things together and cutting bits of foam to put things in the plane, there's a couple of things that you need to think about. Adding FPV equipment to a fixed wing model in particular is going to potentially move the center of gravity around quite a bit. It's also going to affect the aerodynamics. Now in the model that we've just been looking at, you'll see that what I'm going to do is I'm going to sink my FPV transmitter so that the top of it is pretty flush with the rest of the foam. You still want the FPV transmitter in airflow if at all possible. They do dissipate quite a bit of heat. So having them being cooled by the air flowing over the aircraft as it moves through the air is a really good idea. It is going to impact that center of gravity. So it's worthwhile before you start laying everything out on the wing, making sure, first of all, I'd always recommend flying the model and trimming it and make sure that you're completely happy and you know where the center of gravity needs to be. And then placing all the components on the model with a rough idea of the cable lengths, just to make sure that you're not moving that too much. Now, some models give you lots of latitude to move the battery forwards and backwards. That's going to help you get the center of gravity where it needs to be again if you have to put the FPV equipment in a non-optimal position. But things like this little wing, there is no room to move the battery at all. So I'm going to have to put a little bit of effort in here. Also, I'd recommend installing the antenna that you're going to use because there's also quite a bit of weight in that as well. Once you've got a rough idea how that's all going to lay it out, then we can install it. There is going to be an impact on the flight time, which is going to pull a little bit of power from the battery. Relative to the amount of power that the prop and motor are going to run, it's very small, but it is going to be running while you're flying around. So do factor that into the flight time, just be a little bit careful and be aware that the model will be slightly heavier as well. So the flight characteristics might change a little bit. So let me talk about the two things that I'm going to use for this particular build. I would always use a video transmitter that's got good reviews. I use these Quantum Elite video transmitters on loads of stuff. In fact, here's just a couple of videos. The Quantum Elites come in the little silver box like this one, which makes them dead easy to mount. They come naked without the little silver box. They come with the antenna out the back and antenna out the top. So you can get one that will usually do pretty much everything. It does support a wide range of voltages. So I can plug this into a 2, 3, 4S battery without any problem at all. And that's typically what I'll be using on the majority of fixed wing models. So by doing that, it means that you can run it directly from the flight battery and not worry about having any special voltages for your FPV gear. This one has the connectors for power and for the camera. Now I'm going to try, as you saw, to have a really clean build in this Texumo. You could just run the cables along the top and just stick a piece of tape over them and keep them out of the way like that. With this one, I'm going for a super clean install. So I'm gonna try and run the cables inside and actually solder things together. Now that's gonna to take me a little bit more time, but I'll show you how I've done that. 
The other nice thing about the this video transmitter is it does provide a nice clean five volts that the camera needs. Now, most modern FPV cameras these days will run from anything from five to up to 36 volts for some of the run cam ones, but I would always try and run them at the lower end. Anything between five and nine volts, I think is fantastic. If you put more voltage into the camera, the camera just has to dissipate that extra voltage that it isn't using as heat, and you don't want that happening in the camera. I'd rather have that happening up in the battery illuminated circuit and the circuitry that's in the video transmitter itself. Talking about the camera, there's loads of different sizes of camera available. There's this big standard size. This is what people used to call HS 1177 size. This is a full size camera, way too big for what I want on this because it's going to be stuck up in the airflow up in the nose so I can see where I'm going. I'm going to want something that's pretty small. So I'm going to go for one of these little micro cameras. This is actually a Foxeer Arrow Pro, which should do the job. The other reason I'm going to use a camera like this is because it has a feature called VBAT. In addition to the connectors for the little on-screen display so you can change how the camera performs and the three cables that come out the back which are there for ground, the plus five volts we're going to use to power it and the video out as well, there's an extra little light blue wire. And if I connect that into the positive terminal of the battery, it'll also show me the battery voltage on the camera. So if I'm flying FPV, I can make sure I can spot when I'm getting time to come home. So let me talk a little bit then about the process of how I've actually done this. So again, step one for me is absolutely putting all the pieces on the wing and making sure that I've got a good idea where they need to be for it to have the minimum amount of effect on the central gravity. So this is where mine have to sit. So I'll make a note of it, use a little Sharpie pen or something or a little pencil just to mark where they need to be. Then I got a very sharp knife and actually started to cut the recesses. Again, if I really wanted to, I could just hot glued all this stuff straight on the back of the wing. And in fact, I've done similar things like that when I did my iNav videos. But for this one, I'm trying to make it super clean and super sleek. So I'm going to cut a hole at the back for the video transmitter. Also going to include a hole that's going to allow the video transmitter antenna to pop out the back. And I'm also going to cut the hole at the front that's going to allow the camera to sink into the foam a little bit to try and reduce that size. Once I know that that's all going to fit and I'm good, then I can start putting things in place. First job then is to use hot glue to make sure that both of those are going to fit in and not going to fall out. And then once I've done that, it's about routing the cables and connecting it all together. So let me very quickly show you a couple of quick wiring diagrams because it's not really complicated. So here we are, we've got our FPV camera, that's that Foxeer Arrow Pro that we're using, but it could be a run cam, what it could be pretty much anything. Pretty much all cameras these days will run on five volts. Then we have our FPV video transmitter, that's that Quantum Elite, and we've got our LiPo battery that we're going to use to fly. Now the first thing we're going to connect up is the power that's going to power the FPV video transmitter. Now that will run from anything from seven to 20 odd volts, so we can power that directly from the battery. And there's a couple of options here. Now sometimes I actually terminate the two wires from the FPV video transmitter and solder it onto the two outer pins of a balance tap connector. That will give me the battery voltage and allow me to plug the FPV system in separately from the main flight power. Or what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna piggyback the two power wires onto the main power that's gonna go into the rest of the model, power the ESC and motor. That's all been done in the compartment where the receiver and the ESC is sat. Next thing is I need to then connect the wires coming out the FPV camera to the FPV video transmitter. And there's only three wires that we need to solder together. Here they are ready to be soldered. And again, I've pushed a very large barbecue skewer through the foam, rotated it quickly, and uh, it generates quite a lot of friction, and that friction generates heat, which uh, opens the foam up and leaves a channel that I can push all these little wires through. You're just gonna connect the two darkest colors together, usually black to brown or black to black. The two red wires go together, that's going to be the five volts coming out of the FPV transmitter, and the two yellow wires together, and that's going to connect the video out from the camera into the video in of the FPV video transmitter. If you are, like me, going to use a camera that does have a VBAT function, then you need to just connect that additional extra wire into the positive battery voltage, either on the balance tap or actually on the same connector as well. 
In fact, what I did was I just put those two wires together and soldered them onto the back of the main battery connector. Once we've got that done, then we are pretty ready to rock and roll. Double check before you plug in that all of the pieces are correctly wired up, that you haven't got any red and black wires back to front. If you have, you'll get the magic smoke out and then plug it in. Make sure that you can see everything in your goggles. If you have a camera like this that has an on-screen display, I'd recommend plugging the joystick in and changing things around. I, in mine, made sure that I could see my battery voltage in the bottom left-hand corner, which is where I'm used to looking at the battery voltage in all my on-screen displays. And I'm going to have the timer running. That can be quite nice when you're running a wing, just to give you an idea of how long you've actually been up there. And I'm going to pop that in the bottom right-hand corner. Once that's all done, then it is sorted. Top tips for this, once you've got everything in place, I would make sure that the prop on the plane itself is balanced brilliantly. Not only the blade, but also balance the hub as well. That way you'll get rid of as much as vibration as you possibly can, because excessive vibration will make the image look absolutely horrific. Other tip, I'm going for a CCD camera here. Uh, CCD can manage on airplanes that aren't particularly well dampened and do have a bit of vibration. The new generation of CMOS cameras work almost as well. Again, it's very much personal choice, which camera you use. But for something like this, I find a CCD camera tends to be a little bit more forgiving of any excessive vibration coming out of a badly balanced motor or maybe uh, having vibration coming out from the edge of the wing as you're looping and rolling around. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are thinking of adding FPV to one of your craft. I'd recommend getting one of the old beta models that you love and you fly regularly and that you won't be heartbroken if something happens to it. And using the minimum amount of bits and pieces and a little bit of soldering, or in some cases you'll find the cameras will actually come with the right connectors. But I've only made six little solder joints here and I've ended up with probably one of my neatest FPV installs on a basic wing. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless 360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.